We're seeing press fittings used in our industry more than ever before. And in today's video, I want to give you tips that I think you should know about these press fittings before you have a heating and air professional use them and install them in your house. Some of these things are pros. Some of these are cons. I'm not being paid by anyone to do this video. I just think that especially if you're an end consumer and you see your contractor using these fittings, there's some things you need to know. Or if you're a contractor, you know, considering switching to using these fittings, we'll cover some things that possibly you want to know. That said, let's dive into this. I think these fittings have come a long way. When they first came out, we were seeing not only were they a new technology and guys weren't quite educated on how to use them. They were failing. Guys were using them and they weren't maybe cleaning the copper like they should. They weren't doing things properly. And we were seeing these fittings fail. Maybe the manufacturer played a role in that as well. It was just a new technology all in all. And they have come a long way. I, in fact, I rarely see them fail now if installed properly. Can I honestly say that they never fail, that they never have a problem? Well, no, I can't say that, but I don't think you could say that about brazing either, that it never fails, that every single technician out there never has a problem. So at the end of the day, I think they've come a long way. We're seeing newer technologies with the way the fittings are made, maybe the amount of O-rings that are in there, maybe the types of press that we see and so on. They've just come a long way that they're, they're not a new technology anymore. I still see guys talk about how new they are and we're not quite sure how long they will last. Don't think that argument holds as much weight as it used to. They've been around a bit now and they've come a long way. Number two is they are pricey that the tool itself and the fittings themselves are a bit of an investment. And that is part of the reason I personally think we don't see it used more in our industry. But I think if you were to take the initial upfront investment of the tool, for example, I don't want to throw out numbers, whatever that tool costs, you know, depending on which one you get when you see this video, but whatever that number is. But if you were to factor the cost of the tool over the life of doing all of those installations, maybe it might be a little easier to digest at the end of the day. Yes, it's a an upfront cost, but over time, maybe the tool will pay for itself. And we'll talk about why I think that is, especially when we get to number four in our list. But the fittings themselves are also a little pricey. And again, I don't want to say exactly how much they are, because depending on where you're buying it from, which one you're buying, and when you see this video, that might affect how much they are. But let's just say to do a complete installation, those fittings cost one, two, three hundred dollars, right? I'm being really conservative with those numbers. Three hundred dollars, I think, is quite a high compared to what they actually do cost. But let's just say we're shoot high and compare it to say brazing. And once you figure in all of the costs of doing a proper installation using proper brazing techniques, when you figure in the nitrogen and brazing rods and the wear and tear on your torch and all the ins and outs of doing proper brazing techniques, yes, it does cost more. The fittings do cost more, but it, are they that much more? Are they significantly more? I'm not sure that that holds as much weight, especially as we dive into a few others. That said, do me a favor. If you're watching this video, if you're getting any value out of our content, hit that like and subscribe button. And in return, I will do my best to reply to every comment left on this video. Number three is I did a video not long ago talking about the ins and outs of brazing versus say technologies that we see out there now, like soft soldering and some of the other ways of doing things. Using press fittings throws that whole argument out the door. Using press fittings, good clean press fitting, good clean copper line sets, you no longer have to worry about things like oxidation from brazing or flux contaminating the system from soft soldering. You don't have to worry about any of that. Most major HVAC manufacturers are on board with this. They are tired of customers having breakdowns and all the failures that we see simply because guys are not brazing properly and doing things the way they should or soft soldering and the flux contaminating that system and ruining it long term. This throws that whole argument out the window. You're using good, clean fittings and doing things properly. There should be no contamination in that system. Number four is using these press fittings makes things significantly faster and easier. 
Okay, so we're seeing guys that install systems. It takes a fraction of the time that it used to because things are so much quicker. There's a little bit of prep. There's a little bit of doing things properly, but in comparison to brazing or soft soldering, this is significantly faster and easier. And if you are an HVAC contractor and you're trying to figure out the overhead of a job and you're figuring the cost of these fittings versus say the manpower and the different ways of doing the overhead overhead of brazing and you're comparing the two because it's significantly faster and easier, it may outweigh doing brazing at the end of the day. And that plays right into number five, that doing these press fittings also eliminates human error. It eliminates the guy that's not brazing with nitrogen. It eliminates the guy that's doing things and causing future failures that the homeowner has to pay for at the end of the day. It eliminates human error at the end of the day. Do things still need to be done right? Sure. Do things still need to be installed properly with these fittings? Yes. But does it still have as open of a door for human error? I would say no. When you're doing things like brazing or say salt, soldering if that's your cup of tea there is still a possibility of things not being done properly things having issues simply because of human error or human laziness whatever the case may be number six is safety no longer are you having to worry about you're using an open flame and the heat could cause burns or you could possibly even burn someone's house down if you were super crazy with your brazing or breathing in the fumes from that brazing, getting up against that line set that has gotten super hot. You know, I've seen where guys do burn themselves because of it. Again, maybe not super life-changing injuries, maybe not houses being burned down, but if you're using press fittings, it simply eliminates that safety issue. You don't have to keep that fire extinguisher quite so close. The heat that could normally ruin certain components is just no longer there anymore. We see guys use different gels or putties to try to protect certain components, the service valves, the metering devices, different components in that system when they are brazing, if they're doing things properly, press fittings eliminates all that. And yes, I have seen systems where they didn't protect things well. I've seen especially TXVs where you could tell whoever brazed that part in did not protect it very well with wet rags or one of those other technologies. And because of that, it melted things. It actually caused that metering device to fail. And so because we're not brazing, because there isn't high heat temperatures that could ruin some of these components, press fittings eliminate those failures. Number seven, I'm going to play a little devil's advocate, the flip side of this coin, and talk about how I don't think these new technologies, these new press fittings, 100% eliminate the need for brazing. I don't think that the art of brazing will completely go away in our industry. There will be times when pros we might have to pull out that torch to make a certain repair or take care of certain things. One could even argue that because technicians in our industry are going to be doing less brazing, if they're doing these press fittings and they're out of practice and they're out of the habit of doing things properly, that possibly when they do have to go back to doing a proper brazing job, because they're out of the swing of things, maybe that opens the door to certain things happening. But I just think overall, just understand that even with these new technologies and all the benefits of using press fittings compared to brazing, I don't think that this, this completely eliminates brazing entirely. There may still be times when guys have to pull that torch off their van and make a certain repair or braze something together. Number eight is just realize, especially if you're a pro, that not all of these fittings are created equal. And again, no one's paid me to do this video. I'm not going to throw out any brands that are better or worse. Just realize some of these products are imported. They are a lower quality. I think if you're about to spend a bunch of money on the tool specifically, and you're going to make an investment into this, I would do some homework, find out what's what, find out who's who, find out which one has the better quality, which one is made here in North America, and which ones to stay away from. And finally, I know there are a lot of guys in our industry that hate change. They hate the new efficiency ratings. They hate all the new refrigerants coming out, always constantly complaining about something or another, right? I think 
that it should be argued. It should be noted, even in a industry where we see with so much change and guys are constantly hating. Just so you know, when I say guys, I mean guys and gals. I, it's just the way I talk. I'm just saying in general, folks in our industry that aren't excited about change just need to know there will come a day when brazing is not the predominantly most used technology we use when joining copper to copper. I think we're already seeing that. We're seeing the industry move in that direction. We're seeing some manufacturers even play with the idea of instead of when they manufacture those outdoor units and have coming off the service ports, a bell there that you can slip your line sets into and do the brazing job. We're seeing some of them play with longer pieces of pipe there. Some of them have even talked about doing away with the bell entirely. Most manufacturers that I have personally talked to are on board with these press fittings. They're tired of all the failures that homeowners are having because of guys not brazing things properly, causing problems for years to come. Folks using these other technologies with flux and contaminating that system, these press fittings do away with all that. If you press those fittings together, good, clean copper, everything's clean, and then you pull a good vacuum, manufacturers know that they're going to see less warranties. Homeowners are going to see less problems and they're on board with all of this. So we are seeing a industry kind of moving in that direction. And I don't think it's going to be that far in the future where we see brazing not be the predominantly used technology when joining these. We already see mini splits being installed using other technologies with flaring and things like that. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility to say that the industry is moving in that direction. If we have this conversation 10 or 20 years from now, will we still see brazing out there? Probably, but will it be the most predominantly used technology? And I think the answer could be no. That said, let me know your thoughts. Did I miss a tip? Is there something that you think is a concern or something that you think should be noted when it comes to these press fittings? I'd love to hear about it. Leave me a comment down below. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I go over three tips about HVAC that I would give my own mother. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.